What's up everyone? I am super excited to talk to you about my latest creation. That is Boost Winter Wash. Now I spent uh, about 11 months creating this in my, in my mind and in the course of this video I'm going to explain the purpose behind why I created it, uh, how, how to use it, and there's some really cool techniques. And at the end we're going to talk about a chemistry experiment that I'm going to do right on my desk and prove to you the benefits. So I'll give you a very quick overview. The way that you use Boost is you're going to use it as an additive. What does that mean? In your paint bucket, you know, you're the only used for paint, uh, you have hopefully ammo foam or anything in between, whatever your favorite soap is, we'll call it over-the-counter generic brand just to be uh, broad, you're going to add two or three squirts to your current soap and what that's going to do is in this boost formula that I've created, um, there's four benefits that are not commonly found in, let's say, over-the-counter brands uh, in their soap. So what you're doing, hence the name Boost, you're boosting uh, the detergency and the cleaning power and the ability, and we'll go over all that stuff, uh, of you know, why you're cleaning the car. So that's kind of a very broad overview. Before we get into the benefits uh, and the very detailed benefits, uh, let's go over a few quick items just to kind of help you figure out what was going on in my crazy brain as I named it and as I built it and as I sort of designed the whole thing. So let's hop in there. Number one, this is a concentrate. So you're not using it as a standalone product. It's an additive to whatever soap you're currently using. Sort of like an octane boost for your car, you add it to a full tank of gas. You don't just run the additive on an empty tank. Same sort of concept here. Number two, I named it Winter Wash because it offers your car protection for winter-related conditions not found in generic soaps today. Having said this, it also has benefits that have absolutely nothing to do or are independent of cold weather. So for people in Florida or Australia, they'll gain just as much benefit from the hard water softener and the corrosion inhibitors. The name Winter Wash stuck because it's simply fun to say, Winter Wash. Benefit One grew out of this crazy personal need that I had. This is my 964, and when I first bought it, there was one or two little dots of rust. And now, over the years, I've had it for four years, the rust has basically gotten out of control, and it, we're gonna take it to a body shop and shoot a whole new, new video on that, but that's a whole different story. Um, and I thought to myself over these years, how do I solve a problem? Sort of like uh, when I solved the problem, you know, with the, with the wiping of, and the drying of a car with hydrate, how can I figure out and use uh, chemistry to make an environment where it's not conducive. It, it, uh, it doesn't want to grow rust uh, or e as easily. So in this case, water accumulated, um, and this is very common, but it doesn't make me feel any better. Uh, water accumulated here over the years, it's 26 years old at this point, and basically there was an environment where uh, rust and corrosion could live and thrive. So I thought to myself, how can I create an environment when I'm washing the car, even after I'm rinsing it, meaning with the water, where uh, it, it doesn't like that. It doesn't, it, it's not, it's not a, uh, you know, you're not watering the plant and you're not helping it grow. And so that's where this um, first benefit came out of. So it's cor a corrosion inhibitor. And I'm gonna show you a bunch of ways uh, that you can work on the door jams and the jams here. But yeah, it kind of got out of control. Um, but at the same time, uh, I find it a blessing because it certainly motivated the heck out of me to figure out uh, a way so that, uh, you know, cars in the future, newer cars, whatever, as you're washing them, you're just gonna minimize that chance of sort of getting into this uh, heartbreak that I have here. The corrosion inhibitors within winter wash form a bond with the surface of your paint after the wash. And in very basic terms, all the molecules are lined up in one direction, creating a hydrophobic barrier that remains after the wash and is further strengthened by drying with hydrate. Besides adding it to your existing soap, Boost can be used in two common rust areas of your car, the door and hood jams, and of course, the undercarriage. First, add three squirts of winter wash into a 16 ounce bottle with approximately 10 to 12 ounces of water, add a trigger, and then shake it to dissolve the formula. Door jams collect dirt, sand, salt, and worst of all, moisture, because they're in a direct line of fire of the front tires. So this particular spot can be an incubator for rust. With your mixture, thoroughly soak the jams, allowing the product to work into the tight areas. Next, use your wheel brush to agitate the lodge debris. This should be part of your weekly wash routine, regardless of the seasons or where you may live. Oddly enough, I think about it this way. Door jams are like your car's armpits. Whether I'm running a marathon or relaxing on the couch, at the end of the day when I take a shower, I'm washing my pits either way. Why not do the same for your car? When you're done, rinse with water and dry with compressed air and a towel. Once dry, add your deodorant, I mean ammo skin, for protection until your next bath. 
This process can be repeated for the hood and trunk jams, which are hot spots for rust. For the undercarriage, simply add about three squirts of winter wash to about 10 ounces or so in the foam cannon reservoir, and then rinse the undercarriage before each wash to clean away the salt and dirt and leave behind the corrosion inhibitors. Benefit two is increased foaming action, or in other words, lubrication when you need it. Again, you can add it to ammo foam for just an insane amount of suds, protection, and especially lubrication when you need it. Likewise, you can add it to your over-the-counter or cheaper soaps to supplement it, or in other words, add in some of the qualities missing from these low-cost brands. Let me make this crystal clear. Boost added to OK Soap makes it really good. Boost added to really good soap like foam makes it ridiculously amazing. So as an example, I come back from the track with the black Porsche. The car is trash just the way that I like it, but I have to wash it in a certain way. Why? Because the paint is very soft. Okay, another example, I have my SUV and I go hiking with my family. You got to drive over the dirt or whatever. So now there's lots of dust, a lot of grit on the car. Well, guess what? I'm going to use it in that instance, or it's before winter, or the car is very salty. So think of it as, okay, what is my car? What's the condition of it? And do I need a little extra, you know, kick to it, an extra boost? Um, and that's when you would grab it off the shelf and add it to your existing soap. Benefit three is near and dear to my heart because when we moved to the new house, we got well water. And despite all of these filters, we still have hard water. So what I needed to do was create a formula that rendered the hard water inert. Hard water is basically water with too much mineral content, usually calcium and magnesium carbonate, much the same as typical shower scum. But in the car washing world, this causes the soap to have minimal suds and it can leave behind white circles known as hard water spots on paint and even glass. And as all of you know, they are super annoying to remove. Winter wash, however, uses a process called chelation, which is a type of bonding of ions that essentially grabs the minerals, or in other words, the hard water metal ions that are present in the water and renders them inert, thus avoiding the water spots altogether. Benefit four is similar to three, but in this case, winter wash acts as a powerful salt remover by rendering salt or magnesium chloride inert. As your car becomes covered in salt, this high mineral content continually deactivates the cleaning power of most over-the-counter soaps. You can use winter wash with or without a foam gun. If you don't use a foam gun, first rinse the paint, then wash by hand as you normally would, but with the winter wash additive in your soap bucket. If your car is extra dirty and you decide to use a foam gun, do not pre-rinse with water first. Allow the foam gun in the winter wash to dissolve and to lubricate the salt first, then wash as you normally would. You see, by adding specific surfactants to winter wash, the soap maintains its detergency or its cleaning power, even in the presence of these crazy salty cars, essentially keeping high lubrication and minimizing the salt scratches that we commonly find during winter. All right, I've been dying to show you guys some of the testing we do, whether our product is working or not. Now, most of the time, quite frankly, it just doesn't work. And that's that pursuit, uh, trying to get the, push the envelope of every single product. And I love, this is the part I really sink my teeth into. So to give you a quick example, we're gonna do two demonstrations. One's gonna be on foam. Uh, and then this first one's uh, on corrosion inhibitor properties. Now, the goal for me with Boost was when you're, this is very basic, when you are done with the wash and you're using Boost, uh, you're going to leave behind this uh, surfactant film that basically prevents the water from making direct contact with your paint. That's kind of the mission. And so how do I go about that or demonstrating that? Um, and so what we're going to do is do a little uh, experiment here. I'll walk you through it right now that hopefully will give you an idea of um, the power or the use or the benefit uh, of Boost. First, I filled three 500 milliliter beakers with the same amount of filtered water. In this demo, we're going to use 500 milliliters. Beaker number one will only have straight water. In beaker number two, I'll add 12.5 milliliters of generic soap to the 500 milliliters of water, then stir to dissolve the soap completely. In beaker three, I'll add 6.25 milliliters of generic soap and 6.25 milliliters of ammo boost for a total of 12.5, the same amount of total soap as in number two, but in this case, Number three will have half generic and half boost. Next, I cut each metal tin so that they could fit completely submerged in the 500 milliliter beaker. With three pieces cut, I now submerge them in their respective beakers for 10 minutes. Once they've been soaking for 10 minutes, I remove the metal and place them on a paper towel laying flat. 
Now with a cup of clean water, I created a layer of standing water on top of the lid to evaporate and the metal to air dry, thus encouraging oxidation to occur. Essentially, this demo is trying to mimic the common rust areas of your car when water remains and stays in contact with your paint. I let the lid sit for about three hours or so and came back to find tiny dots of rust beginning on lid number one and number two, but nothing on piece number three. At about 10 hours, the oxidation continues to grow on number one and number two. Based on repeated results, I'm confident Boost continues to slow the rate of corrosion compared to not using it at all. Here are a few pictures we took months ago during our initial testing, and this particular one we left the full lid for a long weekend and came back and found it completely rusted out. In test two, we're going to be measuring the relative height, density, and longevity of soap. So in cylinder one, we're going to have the generic soap that we used in test one over here. In cylinder two, we're going to have the same generic soap plus the boost additive and see what happens. First, add one milliliter of generic soap to cylinder one. Then add 0.5 milliliters of generic soap and 0.5 milliliters of boost in cylinder two, equaling the same amount of total soap in each cylinder. Next, I added 20 milliliters of water to each and covered the top with parafilm. Afterwards, I shook the cylinders 10 times each, then placed them back on the table and started the clock. Over the course of 10 minutes, cylinder 1's max suds height was approximately 55 milliliters, while cylinder 2 was approximately 70 milliliters. The spread of 10 to 15 milliliters in height remained relative as the foam subsided over time. Likewise, the density after about 10 minutes or so was approximately 8 milliliters in cylinder 1 to 13 milliliters in cylinder 2. Clearly, these are fun little tests to help give me a good idea if I'm on the right path or I'm totally off base. Ultimately, what matters to me is how it performs in the real world of detailing. And for me, I've been more than satisfied with the formula of boost. Well, that's it. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at larry at ammonyc.com or visit my website, ammonyc.com, for more helpful how-to videos. On a personal note, I sincerely want to thank you for hanging in there and watching this video and all the videos over the years and, uh, quite frankly, allowing me to, um, you know, make originally making these products for myself and now making them for lots and lots of people. And uh, I think making stuff like this and allowing my brain to go crazy and, and put them into products and kind of basically play and, and do something I've dreamt about doing for a long time. Uh, sort of my purpose, I think now in life, as I'm thinking about all these things, uh, it's really possible because of you guys and it doesn't go unnoticed. So for a small business guy to be able to first be uncomfortable on camera and now chat to, you know, with you guys all the time, every week or whatever, uh, like I said, it doesn't go unnoticed. So thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for sir, your support over the years. And, um, I don't know. Happy driving. <laughs> See you guys.